Hello, everyone. I'm Ximia Ling, and today I'll be presenting our research on improving defect detection using self-explaining neural networks. In today's digital, digital age, defects pose an increasingly serious threat to our society. These sophisticated AI-generated fake videos and images can be incredibly convincing, making it crucial not only to detect them, but also to understand how our detection systems make their decisions. Our current self-explaining models, while promising, face significant challenges. They often produce redundant prototypes, meaning they repeatedly focus on the same features and show biased representations in their explanations. This limits their effectiveness and trustworthiness in defect detection. In this presentation, I'll introduce our novel approach called DLPL, Dynamic Orthogonal Projection Loss, which addresses these limitations by enhancing the diversity and the comprehensiveness of model explanations while maintaining high detection accuracy. To understand our contribution, let me first explain how current self-explaining models work in defect detection. These models use what we call prototypes. Essentially, they are learned patterns that the model uses to make and explain its decisions. Think of them as key visual signatures that distinguish real from fake content. For example, in a real image, a prototype might learn to identify natural skin textures, while in defects, it might detect artificial smoothing or unnatural transitions. However, we've identified three major challenges with the current approach. Let me illustrate these problems with concrete examples. First, we have prototype redundancy. Imagine our model analyzing facial features. It might create multiple prototypes all focusing on the same feature like eyes, when it could be looking for other telling signs of manipulation. In our experiments with the ProtoPNet model, we found numerous redundant prototypes that weren't contributing new information to the detection process. Second, there is a concerning lack of diversity in these prototypes. Our analysis shows that current models only utilize about four types of prototypes, severely limiting their ability to capture the full range of defect artifacts. This means we are missing out on subtle manipulation indicators that could improve detection accuracy. Third, and perhaps most problematically, these models show a strong bias toward background elements. Instead of focusing on the manipulated aspects of the image, they might fixate on irrelevant background details like lighting or room furniture, significantly hurting their interpret interpretability and reliability. This is particularly concerning because defect creators could potentially exploit this bias. These limitations matter because in defect detection, we need not just accurate predictions, but also comprehensive and trustworthy explanations of why something is identified as fake. But this is crucial for both technical validation and the building user trust in real world applications. Now let me introduce our solution, Dynamic Orthogonal Projection Loss, or DOPL. This approach fundamentally improves how our model learns and utilizes prototypes for defect detection. At its core, DOPL works by maintaining two crucial types of relationships between prototypes. The first is interclass orthogonality, ensuring prototypes for real and fake images are distinctly different from each other. The second is intraclass orthogonality, making sure prototypes within the same class capture different meaningful features. Let me break down how this works mathematically. Our loss function, LLPL consists of two main components, S representing similarity between prototypes of the same class, and D representing the difference between prototypes of different classes. Traditionally, traditionally these components were weighted equally, but we found that this static approach wasn't optimal. This is where the dynamic in DLPL comes in. Instead of fixed weight, we make alpha and beta learnable parameters. This means our model can automatically adjust how much it emphasizes 
interclass versus intraclass relationships during training. Think of it I like having an, an adaptive balance that shifts based on what the model needs at different stages of learning. We've also experimented with a different variants of DLPL to find the most effective approach, a soft plus version that provides gentle guidance, a sigmoid version that offers more decisive, decisive separation, a 10H version that balances both extremes. Our experiments show these variations perform differently depending on the context. For instance, with the Face Forensics++ dataset, we achieved a 91.8% accuracy using our inter-OPL variant while maintaining significantly better prototype diversity than the baseline. The key innovation here is that DLPL doesn't just force prototypes to be different. It learns how to make them different in ways that are most meaningful for defect detection. This results in prototypes that capture a wider range of manipulation artifacts while reducing redundancy. Let me walk through let me walk you through our experimental results across two different data sets that demonstrated the DLPL's effectiveness. First, looking at our experiments with the Face Forensics Plus Plus, which is a key data set for defect detection, the baseline and prototype net achieved 90. 0.8% accuracy. With our DLPL variants, particularly the inter version, we pushed this to 91.8%, a significant improvement in such a challenging task. What's particularly interesting is how this improvement correlates with our prototype matrix. The cluster cost increased from 0 0.057 to 0 0.157 indicating more distinct and diverse prototype patterns. To validate our approach generalizability, we also tested on COB200, a standard benchmark data set. Here, the baseline accuracy was 74.3%. Our 4 DLPR implementation achieved 74.7% while maintaining a lower cluster cost dropping from 0.033 to 0.03. This shows we can maintain or improve accuracy while achieving better prototype efficiency. Looking at our different DLPR variants, you can see each offers unique trade-offs. The soft plus version pro provides a lower cost at a 0.023, making it ideal for applications where computational efficiency is crucial. The Simoid variant shows stronger separation between prototypes with a cluster cost of 0.052, useful when we need very distinct decision boundaries. Most importantly, these improvements in prototype diversity and efficiency came without sacrificing detection accuracy, addressing one of our key design goals. Let me conclude by highlighting our key contributions to defect detection. Through our research with the DLPR, we've demonstrated three crucial findings. First, we've shown that both interclass and intraclass orthogonality play vital roles in prototype learning. This dual approach leads to a more comprehensive defect detection capabilities. Second, our dynamic weighting system successfully supports diverse learning functions, allowing the model to adapt its prototype learning strategy based on the specific characteristics of defects it encounters. Third, and perhaps most importantly, we've enhanced the interpretability of our detection system without compromising its accuracy, a balance that's often difficult to achieve in deep learning models. Looking ahead, we are pursuing two main directions. We are working on improving the model architecture to learn prototypes more efficiently and we are developing more sophisticated metrics to better assess explanation diversity across different types of defects. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions about our approach or findings.